Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers, and today I'm going to do a little video to show you how I failed, okay, um, trying to practice to learn um, how to maybe resole a shoe at home. Um, now this is probably something that you just don't want to do. There's a lot of expensive equipment that cobblers use when they resole a shoe. So let me give you the basic gist of it based on what I've seen on YouTube. Um, pretty much any video on YouTube I could find by a professional cobbler on how to resole a shoe, put new heels on, things like that I've watched. So first of all, it, by the way, I probably ruined these shoes, but don't cry too much. They were not 12 bucks, but they were 6 bucks. Uh, but they are a pair of Allen Edmonds. They are Goodyear welted. If you don't know what that is, uh, I have a, a link in the description down below and you can, you know, see what that means. But you see the stitching inside the channel. It's pretty much completely worn through the channel and into the thread. So the threads are actually broken there. Okay. Uh, the toes are worn pretty badly. Okay. You can see how thin the leather was getting. I, se I separated that. Okay. Um, and let me show you the other shoe. Um, the other shoe here actually was uh, quite a bit worse. Here is the leather I pulled off of the other shoe. And I'll show you. Like in some places, can you see that? Like how little lightly I'm pressing. It, you can see my fingernail. It's paper thin, paper thin there. Okay. So the tips of the toes were really, I think that's called pronating, really worn out. So here's the kind of the uh, the general procedure i've seen cobblers do so first they usually take the shoe it, it, whether they do a half sole where they resole it from here forward or the whole thing if they're going to resole the whole thing they'll remove the top lift the top lift is this outer layer of rubber on the heel okay like this see here's a half rubber half leather right okay so that's the upper layer except this one has no leather then the heel base, if they're going to do a full resole, the heel base comes off. You see that leather, stacked leather part, okay? Then I've seen them take this to a grinder where they grind all the way around, about, you know, about that much. And they'll grind, and what they're really doing is they want all of the stitching broken through like that. They want to grind it all off. Then you can start to peel away the sole, okay? Now I want you to notice something, first of all, a few things about Goodyear welted construction. So if you know anything about shoes, you know you know that Goodyear welted construction is generally referred to as the best method of shoe construction, but I want you to notice something I never really put a lot of thought into. The threads on the bottom of the shoe are white. On the top, they're black, okay? Do you see that? White on the bottom, black on the top. That's two pieces of thread, okay? So this is pretty interesting. What I did was, first of all, I took this, okay, spatula here, shoved it in there carefully, and basically, I'll try and show you here if I can, woohoo, not lose the camera, okay, and kind of shoved it in, you know, and you can feel the stitching, because right now I'm in between the sole and the welt, and but I can feel the stitching is intact there, okay, that's why it's stopping right there, because of the stitching. See, so the reason the cobbler's grind it is, what I'm doing is, I'm taking this utility knife, and I'm starting to peel this away, okay? And let me see if I can go down a little more. I'm starting to peel this back, and as I go back, you see that peeling off, there's a little bit of glue there holding it on, but there's threads holding this together, and I'm cutting them. You see that? Well, number one, this could be dangerous if you're not careful. Okay, you can cut yourself. These utility knives are sharp. Maybe it'd be better for you to see over here. Okay. This is a little difficult to do. It's easier to do when I'm downstairs sitting down, but you see that? So I'm cutting. Okay, peeling. Whoa. And I don't want to peel the cork off. I want to keep the cork. And do you see there's a bevel on this thing? Okay. So I don't want to dig into the cork, so I'm going to put the bevel down. Ah, see right there. I'm trying to keep the cork intact as much as possible. Okay, but anyway, when you re send shoes back to Allen Edmonds to be recrafted, I think their full full recrafting is 150 bucks. They put new cork and a new welt on the shoe. So the more I learn about this, the more I appreciate what you're really getting. Okay, but anyway, I think you get the idea. I'm not going to do this all on camera. So here you see the outsole, and then here, this is the welt. Let me get a screwdriver to point to it. This piece of leather right here, this is the welt, okay? Now do you see? 
it stops right about there. And you can see that right there is the upper. That's the shoe upper. That's the shoe upper. It comes down, okay, and smooshes out, okay? You see that? Then the layer of cork, right? Now here's something very interesting. This is really difficult to, to remove even though the threads, okay, are worn through. And here's why. I want to show this. Now I need a pair of uh, needle nose pliers, okay? And um, there's a couple different tools I have here. I'm going to use this one, actually. It's got a little bent hook on it. It's really nice, okay? If you take these threads and I try and hook one, you see that I got it? See, I got that thread there. And I have this thing under it. Do you see? I don't know if you can really tell. They are looped through each other. Okay, and I've um, watched some leather and stitching and videos, hours and hours actually, okay? So what you're really doing is, the machine, the Goodyear welting machine, ah, the Goodyear welting machine is taking some sort of black thread and some sort of white thread, and what they're really doing is the black thread is on the top, the black thread is going down through the hole, okay? And really, this is what you're seeing, okay? What's going on inside each one of those holes is this, and it's called a lock stitch, okay? Um, there's a couple different ways to do a lock stitch, um, but what it's doing now is if you look, when you do this, where my fingers are, imagine this is inside a hole, where my fingers are, the thread, okay, is doubled, obviously, but where you have the loop, it's fatter, okay? And it acts like a knot. So what happens is that ball there, believe it or not, is what's working to hold this shoe together even after the thread is completely broken, okay? That's why this is so difficult to remove, right? And another evidence of that I noticed is when I'm trying to pull, you have to pick the stitches. See, now I have these stitches, I gotta get them out, okay? And you gotta do it without damaging the shoe, too. So I'm trying to pick this stitch, okay? And I'm trying to also be on camera as well. This is really difficult. I can't watch the camera. See there, I got the stitch, okay? All right. Now, let's see if this will work. Where did that stitch go that I just got? There. Can you see it's just a loop? Just a half loop of black, okay? But what's interesting is you can see down in here when you pull the stuff out. Okay? You get a loop of black, you get a loop of white, so it's looped around each other. Can you see there? It's looped around each other, okay? So, let me show you what I was attempting to do. So that's kind of the stitch, okay? The stitching and glue that's holding it together. So, when you send these back to Allen Edmonds, they remove the top lift, they remove the heel base, they remove the entire full leather sole, they, they actually remove the cork bed, they put new hot cork, this cork bed, they replace it, they put new hot cork, um, they put a new welt on first, okay, the welt is sewn to the shoe, then the sole is sewn to the welt, and so, I mean, you're getting basically, you know, in, everything that touches the ground has been reconstructed, okay? So let me show you the, the disaster here. Right. So, first of all, you got to get the right kind and thickness of leather, right? By the way, when you buy leather soles, this is actually, uh, I trimmed it from a blank, okay, of leather that I have. And I think this is a, a 10 iron. Uh, and an iron is 1 48th of an inch, okay? So they got uh, leather is measured in irons, leather is measured in ounces. So, first of all, you got to get the right thickness of leather, okay, for the, the sole that you have. Now, second, the joint. Okay, when you overlap it, it has to be, like, basically skived. Do you see that angle there? That is not easy to do. To get that to match up? Man, that was difficult, right? I mean, it was really crazy hard. Now, I don't know how much this shows up on the video, but can you see how ugly my stitches are? I mean, it's horrible, right? It's not terrible up in this, but you see down here, you can see black, you can see white. You know, it looks like a you know drunk driver going down the road, how crooked it is. You know, because I had to basically, what I did was, 
I glued the sole on. Then I actually took a drill bit, okay, because what I'm trying to do is hand welt, because when they machine welt, they'll sometimes puncture new holes in the old welt, and then the welt will have two sets of holes, and it's weak. So what I did is I took a drill, and I drilled zip, 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 each one of those holes with a drill bit. So I drilled from the top side, and it poked out the back, but here's the problem. When you get on the outside where the leather, you know, sticks out, the drill bit was angled. In some places, the drill bit was straight. So see, the holes are not in line. Okay, do you see that? The holes are not in line. Then I cut that groove with the Dremel, and you can see how ugly it is, okay? There's no way you could sell this to somebody, okay? Nobody would pay money for this kind of work, right? Now, let me show you how the stitching, how, what I've been, how I've been restitching this. So I've got the black thread here with a needle. And I'll put a link, see this is one single thread, there's even a method to how you get the, the thread to stay on. Okay, I'll link that video as well. And then I've got the, the, the white thread here, okay? So I'm going to leave the white thread. Now, if you notice on the top side, you only advance, okay? Let me put the, through the hole here. Uh, you know, I didn't bring my thimble. So if you can see, I'm going down, I'm advancing one hole, okay, in the weld. Okay, and, oh, all right, so there, I'm advancing one hole. Now this is the easy part, okay? So now I got one more stitch made. Now here's the key. Black thread, white thread, okay? White up through. So now it's essentially looped, okay? And then I got to put this one back through that same hole. The black is going back through the same hole from which it came out. And when I was downstairs doing this sitting down, um, and I'm dropping tools now, um, I had a pair of needle nose pliers, and now I can't find them. Great. I guess I'll just use oh, here they are, to get the needle through. None of this is natural. Okay, so there I got the needle. And by the way, when I'm pushing the needle through, I gotta be careful not to actually poke the leather upper itself. You see how that hole is angled and it probably shouldn't be, okay? Then pull the needle through. Not easy. And by the way, you gotta be careful not to pull into yourself. You could very easily, you know, pop yourself and, you know, trip to the ER, which I've done before. Okay? So now here's the key. Pulling this through, okay? Watch what happens. Do you see? It's looped. And this is what I've started to figure out because I've watched some people, shoemakers, hand stitch shoes. Watch that little piece of black. Okay. Get a pull until it actually goes up. You want that locked inside. You see? So how hard you pull, you see, the harder you pull, the more that white thread backs up into the hole. Right? I've been working. That took me like, I think an hour, you know, to go like three inches here. I don't honestly know if I want to finish this, okay? Um, the joint here is not horrible, you know, I, I, that could be ground down a little bit smoother. Um, but this was kind of ugly, I missed a hole there. You see that? So, anyway, so this is kind of a failure, but uh, you know, it was a good failure, it was a great learning experience for me, you know? Um, what they would do then after the real cobblers, what they would do, they separate the sole. Let's just say they're doing a half sole. Okay, they would, uh, um, you know, put glue on both sides, glue it on, then they press it. And I missed this part. Okay, they have a big hydraulic press. The hydraulic press um, has the form of a shoe, just like this. Okay, so instead of being on a stand that sits on the floor, this is on a machine. Okay, and this thing goes on because you need to press the the, the cement because this is curved. Okay, and they have this machine with a hydraulic press right? Something like this. And it goes, psh. so here's what I did. Because I didn't have that, I knew I needed to put some, you know, pressure on it. I took a two by four. And you can see I carved a vague shape of a shoe into it. And then I'll show you what I used for the foam. What I used for that foam is, I'm in my garage here. Uh, a few years ago, I was uh, welding up a car, just kind of a beater car. And I was welding the floorboards. I got lazy. I didn't, uh, you know, pull the, uh, I didn't pull the carpeting out. And I accidentally caught 
the seat and the carpeting on fire of the car. And I had a little minor fire. But what I found out was the foam from that seat back was like absolutely perfect. Okay? The seat, seat back foam, if I get this camera back on my mount here, okay, was perfect. Okay? It was absolutely perfect. show you the foam. Okay, didn't really, you know, that one got some smoke damage, but that's why I use the other one. And I have a little curve in it. So what I did was I drilled some holes in the wood, right? You can see I, I drilled some holes and I stitched it on. And then what I did was, if you can see in my vise, okay, I had this in the vise. I had the shoe. I put it in, right? You know, basically I put it in and clamped it together with a vise, and it actually worked really well because the top side, the vise was pushing on the metal, it didn't touch the upper, and on the bottom side, obviously. So this freaking ugly piece of junk looking thing here took me probably an hour and a half to build this thing, okay? So what's my point in this rant? I guess my point is it's easy to be, I think, an armchair quarterback. It's easy to judge a cobbler's work and say, oh, look how the joint isn't perfect, but I just wanted you guys to see how difficult this really is to do. And by the way, forget everything else I've showed you. Look at all the tool marks I put in this leather sole. So next time you see a beautiful, perfectly you know, hand-welted or Goodyear-welted leather sole, I just want you guys to understand you know, um, I've had uh, soles, half soles put on shoes. I think I paid $65. Allen Edmonds does a full resole with the heel, um, you know, with a new welt, with a new cork bed for $150. Um, uh, oh, by the way, I didn't even talk about this. There's different grades of leather. There's super prime, there's prime. Some of the super prime leathers aren't really super prime. They're prime, the leather density, you know, because, you know, most people don't understand leather quality. Um, J.R. Rendenbach is considered the best soles. If you get Allen Edmonds Shell Cordovan shoes, they're $700 shoes. They come with J.R. Rendenbach. J.R. Rendenbach soles, the cheapest I could find is like 50, 40 or 50 bucks just for the sole without it being put on. Just to buy the soles is like 45 or 50 bucks. Now I understand if you're a professional cobbler, you might get them cheaper, but <sighs> anyway, appreciate your cobbler. Okay. The next time you see a beautiful uh, Goodyear welted shoe, you know, that's perfect. I just hope that gives you a little more appreciation for it. Okay. So, um, anyway, I'll catch you guys later. Okay. So here's an update. I went ahead and actually finished the shoe. Um, it's not horrible for my first time, I guess. And it's interesting. The color that's a, um, um, brown Thebing's leather dye stain. Okay. Um, and because this part was tan, it kind of turned it an oxblood color, which is interesting. And that area there, I kind of sanded it right in the middle, so it's not as shiny. Um, I don't know how you, you know, because I kind of sanded off the smooth surface of the leather, so I don't know how you get that, how you get that smooth and shiny again, except maybe more polish, but it's going to be walked on. So definitely not good enough to, you know, charge somebody money. Um, but you know what I think I'll do is I'll probably try and find some, you know, 22 year old at the office who's wearing nun bush shoes and obviously I'll put new heels on them, but you know, either give them to them or, you know, see if I get my money back out of them, 10 bucks or 20 bucks or just have them take me to Chipotle and, uh, you know, get somebody, uh, into their very first pair of Allen Edmonds. But, um, anyway, so that was an interesting learning experience. Um, so where I started stitching was down here and that's pretty terrible. You can see I didn't pull hard enough. I didn't pull the threads through. Um, and you can see I started to figure out what the crap I was doing by the time I got over here and there's still errors and mistakes. Um, but you know, that's how you learn, right? Through making mistakes and trying different things and you know, so uh, probably took me including making the tool and everything. I probably spent about six, seven hours on this. So um, definitely not worth, uh, not worth doing it to save money. I guess I'll say it that way. You better have a passion for learning and you know gaining a skill so all right thank you if you want to see more videos uh, uh, go to my page if you liked this hit the thumbs up if you want to be notified when more videos come out hit that little bell uh, this the uh, notification bell thank you